Thank you. Uh, I call the meeting to order. Uh, remind the witness that he's still under oath. Okay, uh, Mr. Shamogam, please proceed. Now, we are going to refer to the telegram of 14th of December, 1962, from Lord Selkirk. <coughs> this is to the Secretary of State for Colonial Affairs, I think. Now, this telegram was sent after, obviously, after the 7th of December telegram, right? Since this is the 14th of December. Yes. He says at paragraph 5, I said I had recognized all along that a threat was presented by the communists in Singapore. I had not, however, previously been convinced that a large number of arrests were necessary to counter this threat. Recently, however, new evidence has been produced about the extent of the communist control of the Barisan socialists. And also, there has been indication that the communists might resort to violence if the opportunity occurred. Recent statements by the Barisan socialists and Partai Rakyat supporting the revolt in Brunei confirm this. Accordingly, the government, Her Majesty's government, were prepared to see action in Singapore. And then he says in paragraph 9 what the nature of the action should be. 9A, B, C. And then over the page, E, it should include certain Barisan Socialist Assembly men. F, all the communist publications, including Plebeian and Barisan, should be banned. G, it was noted that action already has been taken in Sarawak and various other points. Those are process related, but this, and so that we don't have to spend a lot of time on this telegram, it basically follows upon, and we can take that your answers given in respect of the 7 December telegram equally applies to this telegram, correct? I mean, it's a follow-up. Yes, I, I think so, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Now, let's look at um, your ARI paper. Mm. We have spent a huge amount of time looking at the two notes. Now, let's look at your ARI paper. Page 18. Faced with this scenario, last paragraph, Barisan members were deeply frustrated. We have gone through this. You are good enough to agree that the last paragraph in page 19, looking at it again, you should have reworded it. Equally, the way you have set out the references to the two notes. 23rd September and 30th September really ought to have been more accurate. Would you agree? I would have reworded it, yes. Thank you. And even the word chose, Selkirk chose to interpret these as calls in the last paragraph of page 19. It should be reworded, given that you agree that Selkirk's interpretation was accurate as regards this part about what they agreed on. Even uh, the word we chose. We have already agreed that I would reword Thank that you. sentence, yes.
can I suggest that, you know, going back to, and these are central documents, these are the essential documents on which the Operation Cold Star was decided upon. The telegrams, the underlying notes, and of course, this entire huge bit on open front, but we have had our discussions on open front. I'm not going to reopen that. Based on what I quoted you from the Regis professor from Cambridge, can I suggest to you that you have pretty much breached a number of rules that he set out? And I think let's not argue about it. You can just disagree. Yep, I disagree. And I would say you've fallen completely through the standard of an objective historian. You can also disagree. Yeah, disagree. Your views on communism, CUF in Singapore, Operation Cold Stall, which you have been repeating at multiple fora, are contradicted by the most reliable evidence. It ignores evidence which you don't like. You ignore and suppress what is inconvenient. And in your writings, you present quite an untrue picture. You can agree or disagree. I disagree. Of course, I disagree. Will I get a chance to clarify any of these? Yes, you will get a chance to clarify. Thank you. You are aware that uh, ultimately China decided to stop the CPM transmission to Southeast Asia, including Malaya and Malaysia and Singapore, at the request of Mr. Lee Kuan Yew? Mm, that, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I would recall, vaguely recall that, yes. Thank you. <clears throat> mm. Now, you, at page 13 of the ARI, explain Barisan socialist reasons for opposing the merger between Singapore and Malaysia. Uh, no, they didn't oppose merger. They opposed Lee Kuan Yew's proposed form of merger. Right. Now, do you recall I took you through Jinping, them hatching a plot to sabotage the merger? Basically, Barisan was acting on CPM's instructions to try and prevent the merger from taking place. Would you agree? Jinping clearly stated the Barisan were not controlled by the CPM. He said he also clearly stated they influenced it. Influence is a very broad word. Well, they influenced Lee Kuan Yew as well. Yes, but not at that point in time. Oh, I'm sorry, what do you mean not at that point in time? Not in 1962. No, they influenced him from a very early stage. Yes. They were the and most I took you through that what Mr. Lee said about him collaborating with the communists is similar to what Jinping says about them collaborating with him. I don't mm -hmm. think there is much dispute or argument about that. No, no, no. We are now talking about 1962 yes. and 1963. And I'm telling you that Jinping decided that merger should be opposed for CPM's own reasons. I took you through that, and I'm suggesting to you that is why the Barisan tried to scuttle the merger. You can disagree. 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 Thank you. And I suppose because you consider Jinping not credible, that is why you haven't mentioned him in page 13 of your ARI, ARI paper when you discuss merger. Yes, we've been over this. Thank you. Now, you wanted to refer to some document um, which you said was special branch documents which were opened up by the British. And I said we will come back to it. Yes, please. Please. Uh, Tell me which document and come back to it. Oh, um, this is the one you asked me to look. Okay, give me a minute, please. Yeah. Mm. 
Uh, you, this was on the Hockley bus riots. Pardon? The Hockley bus riots, that's yes. what we were talking about. If you prefer to send us a note. I, I, I can do that, sure. Um, the, the police intelligence journals of uh, 4th, uh, 5th, and uh, 4, 5, and 6th of 1955 would be one source. One source for? The Hockley bus riots. For what point? Um, that uh, you were arguing that they were communist controlled, uh, but the, it was reported in the Special Branches Police Intelligence Journal um, following the riot that they, um, uh, that it had uh, taken, um, that, oh, that the, the, the Freedom Press was arguing that um, the riots were against their line and that, um, uh, they, they said this sort of left-wing adventurism will undermine the anti-colonial movement and um, that it should be, there should be less left-wing adventurism in the future. Oh, that's what you mean. Um, so that is, yes, that's one source. You see, uh, and Dr. Then Tom. They also cited uh, documents uh, which, uh, in, and, oh, and they also arrested and captured communists who said that they're, they actually had nothing to do with the organization of the Hockley bus riot. So that, that he had nothing the, to do with it. Um, yes, that the, yes. Uh, yes. You see, Dr. Tom, I don't see how either of that makes your point. Now, you, uh, you have gone through all of it. I assume I've gone through some of it. What is clear is that there were communist underground forces in Singapore, they were engaging in mass action. Not all of it was directed from the top, and it's entirely possible that even though they were communist controlled and or communist inspired, it might have been the specific groups of cadres who were organizing it without instructions from the top. And the top may well have said, oh, this is going to get us into trouble because the authorities will crack down. They have said that a number of times. Another example is, for example, on the um, attempt to throw out Mr. Lee Kuan Yew and his group by the leftists, a emissary was sent to Mr. Lee to say that wasn't on our instructions. People acted on their own. So if all you're referring to is that some freedom news publication that says, oh, you know, this is not based on our instructions, that doesn't prove that the riots were not communist controlled or inspired. It may prove that they, there were no instructions from the top. Now you're beginning to get it. Well, I accept the uh, sarcastic remark. No, that is, that is the actual, that is very, you know, you're coming close to what I've been arguing, right? No. A lack of communist conspiracy in Singapore. I've never denied that individuals are communists. Let's hold on, let's hold on. Action. That doesn't prove that um, there's no cons communist conspiracy. Ah, we were doing so well. That doesn't prove that there's no communist conspiracy. 
the ultimate Leninist, Marxist-Leninist aims of having a united front organization that would infiltrate a variety of trade unions, middle schools, political parties on the road to struggle was completely in place. Operational difficulties meant that on specific occasions, there were no instructions given for specific actions. In fact, you can see from uh, what Feng Chuan Pi said, the cadres took on themselves to go and do a lot. That doesn't prove there's no conspiracy. In fact, that indeed proves there was a conspiracy, but it was not tightly organized. But let's not get into this. Wait, the lack of a conspiracy proves there's a conspiracy? <laughs> I'm That's not sure not what, what I said. Saying. Yeah, what are you saying? That's not what I said. I'm quite clear what yes. I mean. Yes. I don't need an answer from you. Okay. All I'm saying to you is what you have said doesn't prove that there is no communist involvement in the Hockley bus riots. Neither does it prove that there was no communist united front which was engaging in all these activities, inspiring these activities. It doesn't prove any of it. And let's leave it at that. Any other document you want to refer to? Because at um, various points you said, can I refer to this or that? Uh, I, well, let's, let's just move on. We've been here a long time. Let's just move on. All right. Um, Oh, I should add, I disagreed with that last thing you said. Yes, Just for the course. record, of course, yes. Let me put to you one other document from Chang Taeyong. Um, I'm reading a translation. This is, uh, again, in remembrance of Comrade Cham Chong Chen, my senior in school and comrade in arms, recalling memories of a hero in the Singapore underground. I think this is one of the documents you said you haven't read, correct? Um, if you showed the document, I, I can confirm. I don't have it, but it looks like this. Uh, I have seen that book, but no, yes. I haven't read it, yeah. Right. He says, and I'm reading the translation, in early 1953, I returned to Indonesia. This is Chang Taeyong, accepting the organization's arrangement to go on a mission pertaining to underground route, mainly with my mother's help. After accomplishing my task, I carried out work under the leadership of Ying Ming Chang, that's Comrade D, one of his aliases, and Yu Chui Ip. Although I did enter Singapore stealthily to carry out work assigned by the organization, in the nearly one decade I was away, I did not meet him. Do you, have you come across this at all? Um, no, uh, I just remember there was one document earlier, the book uh, Dialogues with Chin Ping, where I think it was Tony Short asked if he actually ever met Chin Xiong, and uh, do we, is, is that available, or should I just look it up and submit it later? Can you look it up and submit it? Okay, um, the book's in any library. I'll, yeah. I, I probably have a copy at home. We have it, but probably not here. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? I have nothing else. Okay, uh, is there no further questions? Uh, Dr. Tam, thank you very much for your very many long hours over here. Okay. Uh, in the next few days, we'll send you a transcript of, of, of these proceedings. If there are any errors or any amendments you need to make, please make the corrections and send it back to us. Once again, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much, Dr. Mr. Tam. Thank you, Mr. Shamugam. Uh, uh, Clark, can you bring the next uh, uh, witnesses up to the witness table, please?
Um, I think, uh, just to help you, I think the second page says this. So I might as well put it on record. Lim Chin Siong never had any contact with the party in Southern Thailand, did he? Chin Peng, I don't think so, I don't think so. Lim Chin Siong never admitted he was a Communist Party member. So, never admitted. Yes. Very careful choice of words. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.